Over the course of 100 Minecraft days, I attempt to progress as far as possible through the Industrial Revolution. In a world where my character is constantly subject to natural disasters, extreme temperatures, starvation, thirst, and pollution. And that's not all, I added in an extra mod that made monsters significantly harder. Creepers can sprint and turn invisible, skeletons reload their arrows faster and use an axe for close range combat, and zombies are resistant to knockback and can leap towards me. Despite these challenges, how far will I get into the age of electricity and automation in just 100 days? Join me on this adventure to find out. I'd like to credit Speev for authoring the Industrial Revolution mod pack, and Mudflaps for recommending it to me. Their videos are linked below. On day one I spawned on a lovely gravel shore, which was perfect because in this pack I had to start out with flint tools rather than wooden ones. After I collected a few flint, I slapped them against some stone to break it up into smaller pieces and broke some leaves to get sticks so I could make my first primitive tool, the flint knife. The other flint tools, however, required another special ingredient, plant string. I got this by searching for some grass, breaking it with my knife, and crafting the twine together. And with that, I had my first hatchet. I was quite excited to use it, as this pack has some incredible tree felling mechanics. Once I had a few logs, I crafted them into planks. Who am I kidding, it ain't that simple. In this pack, I needed to right click the logs with my hatchet to get the planks. Once I had them, I made myself a crafting table and crafted my first pickaxe. I then ate some nutritious dinner I got from a bush and went to collect my first blocks of stone. While I was doing so, I encountered my first monster. Ooh, scary. I ran away from him without any issues. He totally wasn't coded with an OP AI path planning algorithm to track me all the way to another cave. On the plus side, he dropped a wooden axe with Bane of Arthropods. Them spiders better watch out now. I was running out of food a bit, so I decided to collect some of these large mushrooms and craft mushroom stew, because we all know that mushroom stew restores three hunger. Well, not in this pack apparently. Nutrition and having a well-balanced diet was now something I had to worry about. Though nutrition ended up being the least of my worries for that night, I ran away from a rapid firing skeleton and was jump scared while drinking from a pond. Before I had a chance to yell out of frustration, I saw this beautiful aurora borealis in the sky and took a deep breath. All I had to do was sprint over to where I died and collect my stuff. Easy. Okay, maybe not. I made my way over to an island and laughed at this skeleton as it tried to hit me. Oops, okay, lesson learned. With fear for my life, I swam a bit farther out and made a pillar to wait until the sun rose for day two. The next morning, I swam back to shore, collected some gravel, and noticed a Holstein bull with a nose ring. How did it get that nose ring? Well, your guess is as good as mine. At this point, I had genuinely given up on finding the stuff I lost the previous night, but then somehow, by complete chance, I stumbled across it. With the stone from yesterday, I crafted up a furnace, stone axe, and stone pick. There was a big hole nearby, so I swam down there to see what I could find. And when I got all the way down, I could hear a really cool waterfall sound. The subtleties in this pack are to die for. Literally. I collected some iron, coal, and clay, and then made my way out. I spent the rest of the day running around, debating where to set up camp, and then I found this super weird hole in the ground. I figured it would actually probably be the safest place for me to stay the night. I did a little exploring down there and came across a patch of coal. Turns out breaking coal gives off pollution that gives me blindness and mining fatigue. I mean, I can see why they added that feature into the pack, I'm sure people were practically begging for it. That night, I cooked up some of the ores that I found, and the next morning, I made myself some armor and a shield. Armor on day three, I was practically invincible at this point. I went back up to the surface and chopped some more trees. While I was running around, I decided that a good way to find my way back home easily would be to make a massive pillar that I could see from far away. And getting down was super easy because of all the water there was for me to jump into. Uh, well I found my way back quickly, so at least the pillar was a smart idea. Although once I crafted the last few pieces of iron armor, I had a change of heart and decided to ditch the base completely. The biome I was in had ugly grass and was honestly a little depressing. As I was boating away, I found a pirate ship, but yeah, there was no way I was going to fight the skeletons on board. I came across a pretty little island and took care of the mobs while the sun was rising for day four. But the sun must have been quite bright that day as I started to overheat. Thankfully, I managed to cool myself down in the water before getting hyperthermia. My goal at this point was to collect enough plant twine to make three wool for a bed so I could survive the nights. There wasn't enough grass on this island though, so I boated over to another one and collected everything I needed. There were some cute crabs, but they hurt me when I got too close, so I thought it would be best if I left them alone. I then made my bed and started boating away until I found exactly the biome I was looking for. Turns out it was a very cold biome, which I didn't know at the time, and my winter would be extremely harsh. Anyway, that's for later in the video. At the time, I fell in love with the biome. Massive trees meant that wood collection would be very easy. Before letting the night emerge, I hopped into bed. 
I came across a little peninsula in the biome that I wanted to build my house on. This way, mobs could only sneak up on me from one direction, and I could quickly escape into the ocean if need be. I broke down all the trees and flattened the area, so I could then start outlining the shape of the base that I wanted. Off in the distance, I noticed a village, so I hurried over there and stole some of its crops for food. There wasn't really anything else of value there, so I ran back home before night approached. I knew that the winter season would be rough, because many crops will actually refuse to grow during that season. So if there was a time to start farming, the time was now. I tilled a little dirt platform next to my base and planted the carrots I'd stolen from the village. The rest of the day was spent finishing the outline of my base and avoiding this enderman who took an interest in my area. The next morning I spotted a skeleton hiding under my base. I was able to take care of it without much of an issue, but it was quite funny how many arrows it used. That my friends is a prime example of precision not accuracy. Who said Minecraft can't be educational? While I was building up my base I sneak right clicked on a stair and sat in it. I had no idea I could do that. Now that I had a solid floor I brought my bed into the house and slept. After building some more and collecting some sand, I was running low on health and hunger. So I stole some wheat from the village and tried to craft some bread. Never mind, who needs food anyway? I filled in the windows with some glass panes, but unfortunately I was stuck with the ugly 1.12 glass texture. But somehow I managed to stare at it for over 25 hours of my life, so I'm sure you can manage one of yours. Unfortunately, I didn't have many types of blocks to work with yet, so this wood was all that I had. All things considered though, I was quite happy with the way the base was looking. I would occasionally take some damage while building, and once I got down to two and a half hearts, I could hear my heart beat. A sound I was about to get all too familiar with in the following 91 days. My carrots were growing exceptionally slowly, so I was realizing at this point just how difficult this pack was going to get. My inventory was overflowing a bit, so I chopped some logs into planks and placed down a few chests in my house. Much better. It's starting to rain, so sad. I need more food, right? So here's some iron berries. Do these... Oh, whoa, uh... Wait, <laughs> that wasn't much of a jump boost, I couldn't even move. This thunder is loud, jeez. Is that like a tornado or something? Or is that just normal wind? It's gotta be like a tornado. It's kinda going around in a circle. Oh my. Alright, I need to get home and cook up this raw rabbit, because otherwise I'm just gonna starve to death out here. Okay, this is ridiculous. Oh, we have some carrots. Whoa, I'm jumping really high. Wait, what? Wait, 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 what? No, 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 no. It broke my bed too. You can do it, you can do it. This is not good. Oh my goodness, I, I knew weather was a thing, but like, bruh. Lightning too. Okay, that lightning better not strike me or I am D-E-D -E -D dead. I need to go underwater. Please tell me the bed is still there. Please tell me it's still there. It is still here. Okay, if I die, I should be okay. Oh, arrows, arrows. I'm just gonna hide in a hole. All right, I've done some researching and I have figured out that I actually need a weather deflector. We're gonna need to go mining first because we need this to prevent this. On day 13, I started repairing my base. The tornado stole a lot of my wood, so I had to chop down some more trees. Also, all of my windows had gone too. The house repairing process was pretty straightforward, and I definitely didn't have any more close calls. Once I had repaired most of my house, I went underneath and started replacing the dirt that had been swept away, but I quickly ran out. I hadn't really done any proper mining yet, so I decided to explore a cave that was right near my base. I hear a zombie. That's not good. Oh, there it is. Uh oh. One of the difficulties at this point is that I don't have enough food yet, so unfortunately I had to spend a lot of time walking around with low hearts making me very vulnerable. Once I had geared back up, I went back down for round two. Okay, that wasn't too bad. There's a ton of iron down here, which is great because the mod will need a lot of iron in the future. Whoa, whoa, okay, okay. For the weather deflector, I needed gold and redstone ASAP, so I continued making my way down to a deeper Y level. But the farther down I went, the closer I got to dying. Oh, what the? Oh my god, what? No, 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 no. Ooh. Um, okay, yeah, you guys can stay down there. Please just let me go home and sleep, please. No, no. Oh, oh god. Uh-oh. 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 Uh. Okay, I need to get back and get my stuff though. So like, do you mind? 
I just want my stuff, have mercy. Oh, there's another one. I finally made it back to my stuff this time, took care of a few mobs and made my way back out. I can hear a skeleton. That is not good. Where are you? You're there. Ooh, no. No. As you can see, things were going smoothly. After all the mobs were finally dealt with, I chopped down some more trees and smelted up the iron I'd acquired from mining. I converted those logs into planks and then used them to craft up some ground traps. These are blocks that I can place in the ground, and over time they will slowly collect raw meats, as long as I provide the trap with bait. If I can just put them next to each other, I hope that doesn't make the rates worse or anything. Well, too bad, it does make the rates worse. In fact, it doesn't even work unless it has grass on all four sides. But don't worry, my pea-sized brain figured it out later. I crafted some bait for the traps and placed them in. Since this is the Industrial Revolution pack after all, not the runaway from mob screaming pack, I decided it was time to start growing some hemp. This was an essential element for tech progression. I spent the rest of the day rebuilding my farm and growing up the new seeds. The next day, I continued to rebuild the land around my house and fix the ground trap layouts to actually work properly. That night though, another twister came. Unfortunately, my mining expedition didn't yield any gold, so I still didn't have a weather deflector. I had an idea though, I'm not sure if this is actually how the weather mod works, but I thought it might try to target the player's location, so I decided to run away from my base to see if the tornado would redirect itself to follow me. Sure enough, my base was untouched. I quickly realized that I made a grave mistake though. For some reason, I decided to bring my bed with me, and sure enough, the tornado destroyed it. So now I was on half a heart with no hunger, and I needed to craft a bed quickly so I could set my spawn again. But there were too many mobs, so I decided to boat really far away and just wait in the ocean until daytime. As if hunger wasn't enough, I also got hypothermia. Thankfully, it doesn't actually kill me, it just brings me down to half a heart, so I was still safe. As I was waiting for daytime, I came across some hamsters, but could only save one of them. When I got back home, the mobs were gone and I crafted up a bed. But when I right-clicked it, it didn't say spawn point set. This is Minecraft 1.12, so I think I would have to survive the entire day before I could set my spawn. I played the day pretty slowly to make sure I could stay alive. The main thing I worked on that day was collecting some sand and clay, which I would need later for a coke oven. The next day, I went back to the village to steal some more food and expand my own farm. I made the coke oven too, which was awesome. To get creoso oil, I needed to smelt some coal into coal coke, so I popped back down into the mines to get some. A lot more fighting and things happened down there, but there weren't any real close calls this time because I played a little bit smarter, and all you need to know is that I came out of it alive and well. On day 23, I got my first bucket of creosote oil. With this, I could now make treated wood. My first course of action to start off the Industrial Revolution was to generate power. I tried to make a water wheel, but then realized I needed steel first for that, which needed a blast furnace, which needed blaze powder, which meant I would have to go to the nether, and I wasn't quite ready for that. I decided to go mining again and collected a decent number of resources. However, caving was very dangerous, and I finally decided it wasn't worth the risk at this point. I instead dug a staircase down to Y11 and started a strip mine. I found diamonds, yay! After a little more digging, I came across a ravine. The ambient sound and particles here were really cool. And there was some obsidian here, so I decided to craft a diamond pick and collect some. I would need about 10 for the nether portal. I continued strip mining and exploring any small caves I came across. I found more diamonds and also found some gold too. When I tried to leave, there was unfortunately a skeleton in the way. I was luckily able to block it off and decided to just dig a new staircase up to the surface. I found myself in the ocean just by my base, but quickly developed hyperthermia and was being shot at by a skeleton. I was just about able to escape and slept past the night. The next day I started to notice a cloud of pollution collecting over my base. It must have been coming from the coke oven. I should be fine for now, but if the sky gets too polluted in the pack, very bad things can happen. I decided to take a look at my nutrition score, and yeah, it was pretty bad. I had been basically surviving off carrots for the past several days. But at this point, there really wasn't much I could do about it. I crafted some diamond armor with the diamonds I'd collected from mining and decided to go exploring. If I was able to kill a bunch of animals, I would at least be able to improve my protein score. I tried to kill a dart frog, but it gave me a crazy amount of poison, bringing me to one heart. And as if that wasn't enough, I also got hypothermia. Bruh. Hopefully I can find my way back. I think it was this direction, but we'll find out. It's a llama. Do you like me? No, you don't like me. That's, that's sad. Goodbye, llama. I thankfully found all my stuff and continued my adventure. When I was taking care of this animal, I wasn't paying attention and got poisoned by another frog. This is really not going to plan. Oh no, oh no, skeleton, skeleton, skeleton. Oh. Okay, yeah, there's three creepers after me. Great, great, great. Oh, and there's creepers there too. Okay, okay, this is not good. 
I didn't want to do this, but I think I'm digging myself a hole. I mean, I have to. There is no way I'm getting back. Once the sun rose, I carefully made my way out, though I was still quite worried about getting home safely. I crafted some planks and decided to ride a boat back. When I got home, I noticed that the water on my farm was turning to ice. Winter was officially here. Thankfully though, I discovered that I could turn my remaining carrots into stock, which would provide me with more hunger per carrot. I wasn't quite happy with the way my house was looking. Obviously it wasn't done and I had no roof, but I wanted to spruce it up a bit. I swapped out the floor with a chiseled stone texture I liked, which I think helped a bit, but don't worry, I was going to improve it a lot more later on. Another part of the base I didn't like was that it was raised off the ground too much, so I decided to add some dirt between the pillars to make the building look a little bit more structurally sound. I felt quite happy that I managed to survive a couple minutes without losing more than two and a half hearts, but I think the game knew that, and they sent a witch to bring me back to reality. Back to half a heart, yay. I researched a few recipes and came across the meaty stew. By turning wheat into flour and combining that with raw meat and stock, I could get a meal that restored two and a half hunger. Something about my base still wasn't sitting right with me, so I decided to see how treated wood stairs would look in place of the fir wood, and I kinda liked it. I'm a big fan of the dark oak wood and vanilla, and this was close-ish to that. I made cobblestone scaffolding around my base and swapped out the rest of the fir wood with treated wood. Once it was all in, the base definitely looked better. I lost quite a few hearts during this building process, so I decided to go on a mission to collect some raw meat for the meaty stews. If you like llamas, you might want to close your eyes for this part. Even though I was out for meat, I got sidetracked, as you do, and visited the village again. I stole some bookshelves for, well, books, and some bricks because I thought I could use them for my roof. When night fell, I made my way back home, but unfortunately couldn't sleep. There were monsters under the bed. Literally. I was hoping for just a zombie, but of course it was a creeper. There were even more mobs around, so I had to escape to the water and wait there until daytime. I had been putting off going to the nether these past few days to figure out my food situation, but I thought it was finally time to give it a go. I wanted the portal to be far away from the house, so I made a long bridge of andesite bricks. This ended up needing a lot more than I expected, so I had to go back down to the mines and collect more. As per usual, the mining session went off without a hitch. When I got back up to the surface, I noticed the wind starting to circle. Now that I had gold, I quickly crafted a weather radar and weather deflector. Based on the radar, it looked to just be a lightning storm, not a tornado, so there was thankfully nothing to worry about. Using the additional andesite, I was able to finish the bridge, and some creepers took quite a liking to it. Now that I had made a bridge, I decided to explore the new biome a little and found myself a horse. It was pretty slow to ride, but at least I could now explore farther distances without losing much hunger. The next course of action was supposed to be the nether portal, but I wasn't quite comfortable with that yet. And for good reason too, trust me. Hang tight for a little longer and you'll understand exactly why I feared the nether so much. After taking another look at the power generation techniques, I realized that although water mills needed steel, windmills didn't. So I created one and hooked it up to an LV capacitor. In the future, I'll add some string tarp things to the windmill to make it more efficient, but the good news is that I finally had power. Unfortunately, my tech progression thus far has been slow, but it's important to keep in mind, just like how Rome wasn't built in a day, the Industrial Revolution would take its fair share of blood, sweat, and tears. With zero food again and hypothermia, I did what any strong-willed person would do and persevered. All through the night and early morning, I filled in my roof with brick stairs. One of the techniques I'd been using to build the roof was a water bucket. This really helped when it came to traversing the roof without taking fall damage, but then something happened which I did not expect in the slightest. In case you didn't catch what happened there, during the winter, water will occasionally turn to ice. I forgot this applied to my water bucket, and sure enough, it froze exactly when I was there and suffocated me. Speaking of the cold, I was getting quite annoyed by the constant hypothermia. It posed a real problem for me, because even if I did have enough food to regenerate my health, hypothermia would just bring me right back down to half a heart. Thus, what I really needed was a way to warm myself up. There are quite a few methods to do this, but the only two that I knew of at the time were the heating coil and campfire. And, well, the campfire wasn't very effective. I guess it didn't help that there was a massive blizzard going on. Oh, oh, goodbye. Goodbye, house. Oh, come on, land in the water, land in the wa- Ooh, jeez. Uh-oh. 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 They're shooting at me, but I don't have my thing equipped. Shield. Let's try going in the water. Can I just go down in the water? Nope, I can't even go down. Great. How I survived through a blizzard tornado thing on half a heart, I have no idea. Making my base next to the ocean was definitely the move. 
The next day I went into the mines to grab some clay, and fortunately the bricks from the village weren't enough to finish my roof. With a combination of smelting bricks, placing stairs, and warming myself up over the campfire, I managed to get a good chunk of the roof done. I finally plucked up the courage to go make another portal at the end of my bridge, but unfortunately there was a baby zombie, I was at half a heart, and the rest was history. What's even worse is when I ran back to get my stuff, there were even more mobs waiting. I didn't stand a chance. I went to sleep, and then the next day I broke my boat out of the ice and rode it quickly around the skeleton to reach my stuff. I then constructed and lit the portal. My goal for this trip was to find some magma shards so I could craft a heating coil, which was basically a campfire, but way better. When I spawned in, my hypothermia disappeared quite quickly, but then I caught fire from a blaze and ran back through the portal to heal up. When I went back in, I was able to see some magma blocks, but then another blaze shot me, I jumped down, took care of a foxhound, got shot again, and started running away from a magma slime. Then I got clipped by some lava that was still generating and burned to death. All right, we can do this, we can do this. Um, which way? It was this way, right? No, it was not that way. Which way was it? Uh, this way. Why are there baby zombies in the- No, 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 no. Come on, come on, get there, get there. No, this is impossible. I don't- I don't think I can get my stuff back. I think most of it burned, and- and that was it. Oh well, at least I still have some bricks. Yay. One thing I really wanted to help prevent mobs from hanging around my base was a powered lantern. These were from immersive engineering and would prevent mob spawns within a 32 block radius. But before I could craft those, I had to make an engineer's workbench using some treated wood. I really wanted to sleep the night, but there were mobs nearby, so I couldn't. And while I was prepping the materials for the lantern, I was rudely interrupted. No, 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 you don't. Don't even think about it, bro. No, he got me through the floor. Now that it was daytime, I felt more comfortable going out and collecting some wood. I remade a hammer and wire cutter from Immersive, and then continued crafting the items needed for the powered lantern. When I was out collecting sand for glass, I got a decent view of the house. I then placed down a lantern and forgot that I only had half a heart. After a bit of wire finagling, I got it to light up. But the placement of it didn't make much sense, so I wanted to make a stone path around my base that the lantern would actually be lighting up. I also wanted to use some spruce wood in the design of this platform, but there were no spruce trees near me, so I traveled over to some that I had seen a while ago. On my exploration to collect spruce, I found a family of horses. The baby horse had better stats, so I kidnapped it. The next day, the horse had already grown, and getting it out of the boat was a real challenge. When I turned on hitboxes, the horse and the boat were basically the same size. Luckily, I found a small inconsistency at the bottom. But even after all the effort I put in to prevent harm from coming to the horse, he was still a little mad at me for stealing him from his mother. He ended up forgiving me though. As I was building the platform, well, I died from fall damage and from walking into my live wiring. On top of those unfortunate events, there was a blizzard that night as well. And the next day, after dying to a leaping zombie, I noticed something high up in the trees. You are my horse. Yay, you're still alive, up in the tree. I ran out of spruce wood again for my platform, so I took my horse out on a trip to get some more. While I was out exploring, I came across some cows. One of the nutrition bars I had to keep an eye on was dairy, and the best thing for that stuff could be made with milk. In this mod pack, these cows replaced the regular cows, unfortunately, and are much more of a pain to milk. I knew transporting them all back home would be challenging, so I tried to use some fences to trap them. Let's just say it didn't go exactly to plan, and I got shot by a skeleton. Hypothermia is rough. By the time I got back to where I died, I was already down to half a heart again, and immediately died to a cave spider. A cave spider above ground. Yeah, all thanks to the extra mod I decided to add. Anyway, the next time went a bit better, and I was able to recover my stuff. The cows were being a right pain in the patootie, so I gave up on them. The item I really needed for this kind of work is a lead, which I could craft with leather. Thus, I set off collecting meat for food and leather for leads. After I had enough, I found a bull and a cow to take home with me. The travel home was honestly pretty smooth until right at the very end. I took care of a skeleton without issue, but then, well... When I made it all the way home, I quickly set up a small barn area for my cows to live in. It was nothing special, but I did give them a small waterfall. I wanted to breed them together, but even after I fed them and gave them water to drink, they refused to mate. I even paused the game to watch a tutorial on the mod, but still couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong. So I gave up and continued building the road around my house. I had collected quite a bit of meat during that adventure, so I was able to cook up some meaty stew to keep me fed for a while. When I checked back in on my animals, the cow was gone. Turns out it had drowned itself in the waterfall. Well, there goes my plans of getting milk. On day 53, I crafted an external heater. This is a machine that can fuel my furnaces using the power generated by my windmill, but it uses up quite a lot, so I crafted up four sails to improve its efficiency. 
I collected more hemp that night to help me afford the last four sales. But when I went to put them up the next morning, I came across a skeleton that was in a prime position to shoot me down. I played it very carefully and was thankfully able to kill it without a scratch. Then I pillared up and plopped on the rest of the sails. Nice. Now that I had a decent power set up, I started working on crafting a machine that would improve the quality of my life tenfold. The Garden Cloche. This magnificent invention is able to grow plants very quickly as long as it is supplied with water and power. As for power, I had that in the bag, but water? That was a different story. I wasn't quite sure how I'd accomplish that. I tried placing a sink right next to the input port, but that didn't work unfortunately, so then I tried crafting some fluid pipes to extract water from the sink, but that didn't work either. After some research, I discovered the fluid pump. This was a part of immersive engineering I had never played with before, so I had no idea what I was doing. Finally, I figured it out. If I placed the sink beneath the pump and then powered it with a lever, it worked. By this point, I was getting quite low on resources, so I went on a very long mining expedition. Having meaty stew with me made mining so much more doable. I even found some more diamonds, which was perfect and exactly what I was looking for because now I can get started with the Cooking for Blockheads mod. This is a super helpful mod that will let me know what food recipes I had the ingredients for and could auto-craft them for me. This was another mod I wasn't very familiar with, so I just decided to craft all of the different types of kitchen appliances, including the oven, fridge, kitchen counter, and tool rack. Later that day, I noticed something that massively increased my mood. The ice was slowly starting to melt. This means that winter is probably almost over, and soon I wouldn't have to worry about hypothermia every waking moment of my life. The garden cloche and cooking setup would definitely help out with all of my nutrition needs. Well, except dairy. Since the cow situation was a no-go, there were other ways I could get dairy. One of which was the soybean. This was a Pam's item that dropped from those weird bushes. I decided to test my luck and go on an adventure with my horse to find a soybean. I was quite surprised that even after breaking tons of bushes, I couldn't find any. It turns out they only drop from tropical gardens, and given that the word tropical was in the name, and I live next to a snowy biome, my chances of finding a tropical garden anywhere close to me was next to none. So I traveled back home, made myself some meaty stew and garden soup, and then left on an adventure to find a tropical garden. On my travels, I came across a new village. This one had an immersive engineering house, but for some reason the back of it wasn't finished. Remind you of anyone? Treated wood and bricks are a little bit of a pain to make, so I may have demolished a few buildings. I hoped that the farther I explored, the warmer the biomes would get. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but there was something about this biome that gave me the impression we were heading the wrong way. A few minutes later, I had an epiphany that made me feel super dumb for wasting my time. The market. I completely forgot that was a thing. If you don't know what it is, it's a block that you can trade emeralds with to get whatever seeds you want, including soybean seeds. All I needed now was to run back to the village by my house and trade with the villagers to stock up on some emeralds. But when I got there, it looked a little deserted. All the villagers had died except one. This guy wanted some charcoal, so I cooked some up and traded with him. I might need more emeralds in the future, so I dug the villager a little hole to stay safe in. I popped back home, crafted the market block, and bought myself a soybean seed. Nice. I popped it into my garden cloche and started producing soybeans. How do these get turned into milk, you ask? Well, if I put them into a presser, they produce silken tofu and grain bait, which if I then place into another presser, I get soy milk but it barely helped my nutrition levels, unfortunately. So I did some more research and found carrot soup, which uses the silken tofu and gives me a bit more dairy. I had garden soup for vegetable, meaty stew for grain and protein, and now carrot soup for dairy. The last category was fruit. According to Pam's Harvest Craft, tomatoes are officially vegetables, so that wasn't an option. Instead, I grew up some strawberries in my garden cloche and crafted some fruit salad. It felt so good to finally have plenty of food. The rest of this pack should be easy, right? Well, let's just say there were plenty more deaths to come. I wanted to get a second garden cloche up and running, so I went outside to set up a second windmill. There were a few mobs to deal with, but I made quick work of them. Okay, now that creeper was literally invisible. I went through my recording in detail, and not once was there a creeper in my line of sight. After collecting my stuff back, I hooked up my new windmill to the main power grid, which required me to collect a bit more clay and copper. That night, I had a crazy close call with a family of zombies. I have no idea how I got out of that alive. The next morning, I crafted up a second garden cloche so I could collect crops even faster. With the hemp I had been growing, I crafted up some more windmill sails and put them on the new windmill. I had just enough power at this point to run both garden cloches and a single furnace simultaneously. Since I still had all the brick I had stolen from the village, I decided to finally finish up my roof. The next design decision to figure out was the material for the blocks above my windows. I tried out terracotta, but it looked awful. 
If you wonder why I play at night in these videos, it's because I genuinely want to make as much progress as possible during the 100 days, so I have interesting things to talk about in the videos. But unfortunately, this comes at a cost. This night, a skeleton's arrow knocked me into a hole and followed me in. There was no escape route, and since skeletons are also equipped with an axe that can disable my shield, I was done for. I got my revenge the next day, though. Anyway, back to building. I had an idea to improve the section above my windows, but for it, I would need a lot more wood. So I went to collect some. When I returned home, I started implementing my idea. I was quite happy with it, but one thing that was still irking me was the fact that the road around my house was floating in the air. So I collected some dirt, placed some dirt, and got blown up again by another invisible creeper. After a lot of digging, I broke my last shovel and was now all out of iron. But that was okay, because all I had to do was pop down to the mines, grab a few more ore, and make my way back. But it turns out my shield was also broken, and I didn't realize that until it was too late. And when I went back to collect my stuff again, another invisible one snuck up on me. Thankfully, most of my items were still there, but then it happened again. I genuinely didn't think invisible creepers would pose this much of a threat. If someone can survive this pack in hardcore with the extra mod that I put in there, I would be super impressed. It was all worth it though, because after all that effort, I yielded 8 whole iron ores. With that much iron, I don't think I'll ever have to go mining again. Anyway, at this moment in time, day 74, I made it my primary number one most important goal to get steel before day 100. This means I need to collect blaze powder from the nether, but we all know how my last nether venture turned out, so this time I needed a plan. After several seconds of critical thinking and brainstorming, I came up with a foolproof plan. I would use potions of invisibility so I could sneak into the nether and set up a mob farm around the blaze spawner. There was a slight miscalculation with this plan though, I needed a blaze rod to craft the brewing stand and blaze powder to fuel it, but at the time I thought I was a genius and I went on my merry way trying to find brown mushrooms. It was a short journey. Another item that was actually important to get was gelled slime armor. This is supposed to keep me cool in hot environments like the nether, but to make this armor I needed slime balls. The easiest way to get these were to craft them from jellyfish, so I crafted up some water traps and placed them in the ocean outside. They weren't working yet though because I needed fish bait first. This just took a little bit of manual fishing and crafting. The water traps were pretty slow and I needed quite a few jellyfish, so I crafted some more. While those were doing their thing, I also filled up some barrels with water. When I go to the nether, I can place down the barrels and drink from them. The other ingredient for this special armor was ice cubes. This was pretty straightforward, I just had to go break some ice with my pick. While I was fishing the next day, I caught an enchanted bow with punch, unbreaking, and mending. This would definitely be helpful for the nether. Fishing thankfully gives XP, so I put the bow in my offhand and fished non-stop until it was repaired. By this time, I had collected enough jellyfish and had made myself the gelled slime armor. The only logical thing to do now was to take it for a test drive, so I popped into the nether and quickly started digging down until I found some magma shards. I definitely should have done this the first time. It was way safer than running around exposed. Sure enough, I found some, ran back home, and crafted up a heating coil. The alternative to this is the cooling coil, which would be very useful for the nether, so I crafted one up. Now that I had a cooling coil, barrels of water, gelled slime armor, and an enchanted bow, I was feeling ready to fight. My goal this time was to find magma slimes, because I could also use those to craft up a blast furnace for steel. Oh, I just got hit. Oh my god, that was a lot of damage. That was a lot of damage. Oh no, why are you mad? Why are you mad? Why are you mad? Why are you mad? Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, big jump. How did they get mad? I didn't even hit them. Oh, yep, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I am dead. I am dead. I am dead. Oh my god. Oof, blaze. There's a blaze there too. Hello. Oh, that hurts. Why does that set me on fire? Come on, blaze. Go down. 
Oh my, it blew up? You're joking. Oh, weather skeleton. Yikes. Did not know that was there. Oh, and he's coming after me. No. You're angry at me too? What did I do? All right. Oh, hello. Holy mackerel. We're getting hot, so I'm just going to cool down real quick. Oh, not good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, not good. Uh-oh. Well, that went well. Worried that I would lose all my stuff, I equipped some backup gear and ran towards the portal. I was hoping the mobs would have despawned when I came back through, but they were still there, and since magma slimes turn into lava when they die, I also burned all of my stuff. I went back again to double check, but was quickly chased away by zombie pigmen. All of the preparation I had done up to this point for the nether was officially wasted. Using magma slime for the blast furnace wasn't even an option anymore because when the slimes turn into lava, they burn their own drops. So my only option was to take on the blazes. To do this properly, I needed a shield, and most importantly, a bow. Hitting the blazes with tools set me on fire, but using a bow is safe. With my fresh items, I ran back in hoping to come across a blaze. But the zombie pigmen were waiting for me, I hit a dead end, and well... For the next 10 minutes, I researched JEI to try and find some workaround for getting steel. But sure enough, collecting 5 blaze rods was the only feasible way. I went in again, but now my mentality changed. Before this, my goal was to try and die as few times as possible. But yeah, I was already failing incredibly at that. So at this point, I was now willing to trade anything for the blaze rods. Even multiple of my lives. My goal with these sacrifice missions was to collect intel and set stuff up to make each consecutive mission more effective. After two missions, I was able to make a path to a blaze spawner in the fortress. I then tried to block it off as quickly as possible before blazes spawned. Though on my next run, I couldn't even make it back to the spawner without getting destroyed by a wither skeleton. After failing that route a few more times due to the mobs not despawning, I was able to find another way back to the spawner. This time I had a high vantage point, and I used gravel to try and create a wall around the spawner. I thought this method was pretty smart, but it ended up just taking too long. I died continuously. By this point, I honestly believed I would not be able to get the blaze rods I needed for making steel before the 100th day. As I contemplated my future plans, I went on a bit of an adventure to see if anything I saw would spark any ideas. Nothing stood out for me, but I did come across a mushroom island. It looks so peaceful. No mobs spawn here, so this honestly would have been an incredible place to set up camp. It was too late at this point though, I definitely didn't have enough time to move all of my stuff over here. Funnily enough, after I had been exploring for like 20 minutes, I accidentally circled back on my own house. I think it was the Minecraft gods telling me not to give up and to give the nether another shot. So I did. It didn't help that every time I went to sleep I had a constant reminder of how much I died. The game was literally rubbing it in my face. I decided to take a little break and work on the terrain around my house. Part of it was still floating above the water. After that short little break, as well as a good night's sleep in real life, I returned refreshed and ready to get these blaze rods no matter what. The first thing I did was craft up a diamond pick so I could collect more building blocks to take with me into the nether. I put all the cobble into a chest near the portal so I would easily be able to stock up after each death. After a few more missions, I was able to make a path to another, more isolated blaze spawner. When I got there, I quickly boxed myself off in a small cobble hut and confirmed to myself that using a melee weapon against these blazes was useless. I was out of arrows though, unfortunately. Flint and sticks were easy to get, but the feathers would definitely be more of a challenge. I took my horse out on another trip and killed a bunch of hens for their feathers. I stayed out a little too long though as night approached and mobs started spawning. I was taking fire from some skeletons and messed up my horse's jump. We got separated in the water and with fear for my life, I ran away without him. Don't worry, I promise I'll come back for him later. When I got home, I stocked up on food. Get it? I stocked up on food? I bet you just fell out of your chair laughing so hard that you peed your pants. Don't worry, I won't tell anyone as long as you don't tell anyone about this. Over the next few days, I made more attempts at getting to the blaze spawner to collect blaze rods. They were mostly unsuccessful until this one. The blaze wasn't in a position that I could shoot, so I decided to YOLO it and go after it with my axe. Sure enough, I got it, but I burned to death before placing it in my chest. Thankfully, it was still there waiting for me when I ran back. What I learned through doing this a few more times is that if three blazes spawned at once, unless I could somehow isolate one, I was dead no matter what. But if only one blaze spawned, I'd have a chance. On one of my next runs, I volleyed a fireball back at a ghast with a mushroom. How come hitting a blaze with my axe sets me on fire, but punching a fireball with a mushroom doesn't do anything? Hmm. There were many missions and they were very repetitive, so I won't show them all, but once I got my fourth blaze rod, things got a lot harder. 
When something dies in this pack, they give off pollution, including me when I die. So by this point, my safe little cobblestone hut had so much pollution in it that I had blindness too, weather, weakness two, mining fatigue three, poison, nausea, hunger two, and slowness. Can you guess how I died? If you guess drowning, then you're a genius. After I took care of that ghast a couple runs ago, I felt pretty confident in my deflecting abilities. Maybe too confident. While I was preparing to get my last blaze rod, a crazy number of mobs spawned and came after me. When I gathered my belongings again, I made another trip to the spawner and the first thing I did was break the cobblestone on my roof. This would make me a little bit more vulnerable, but would allow the pollution to float away. I then died a few more times, there is no need to show that. And then finally I did it. Oh my goodness, we have five. Okay, so I'm gonna come in here, grab this, and just turn around. You can kill me now, you can kill me. We are not going to be able to do this before 100 days if we die here, so wish me luck. It all comes down to this. Five blaze rods, in and out, all's good. Okay, do I need any of this? I can bring... No! What was that? At least it doesn't destroy the stuff in the chests. That would be very unfortunate. Alright, so far so good. Why are you in here? Seriously? Okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. So far so good. I should probably equip my shield. At least there's no creepers in the nether, that is something I am quite happy about. Some mod packs have those nitro creepers, and those are not fun to deal with. We officially have hypothermia, but that's okay. Go through, go through. Let's go, yes! To make the blast furnace, I still needed some nether bricks, but those were easy to get. I ran quickly back into the nether, grabbed about a stack of nether rack, and came back home. A few minutes later, the bricks were smelted, and I was ready to craft the blast furnace. There was no obvious place to put it, so I just constructed it right next to my bed. I popped in some iron and coal coke, and sure enough, it started making steel. I was honestly so happy right now, I was genuinely smiling and pumping my fists in the air at my desk. I never thought I would be so happy to get five blaze rods in Minecraft. At this point though, since I still had a few more days left, I set myself another goal. By day 100, I wanted a crusher. This is a large immersive engineering machine that will chump up each of my ores into two dust, which I can then smelt into two ingots. Anything to make me mine less frequently, I was down for. But of course, the crusher is expensive. I would need a lot of iron and a lot of steel. So I went mining. I found a zombie spawner in the side of a ravine, but when I checked in the chests, there was nothing useful. After collecting a good bit of iron, I made my way back, smelted some steel, and started crafting the materials for the crusher. I needed 10 steel scaffolding, 1 redstone engineering block, 10 light engineering blocks, 8 steel fences, and 9 hoppers. The light engineering blocks used up a lot of iron though, so I had to pop back down to the mines for enough to finish them off and also afford the fences and hoppers. Once I finally had everything I needed, it was the morning of day 100. I better get this working quickly. This was a large machine, so I dug out some space outside my base and started the construction. I thought I had finished, but even after slapping the hammer onto every block I could think of, it wasn't coming together. Turns out the middle block was supposed to be a light construction block, not a steel fence. Whoops. But now it works. The last step was hooking up the power. Nice. It was pretty slow, but it would be more than fast enough for now. For those of you with a good memory, or just those of you who care dearly about Minecraft animals, I didn't forget about my horse, don't worry. I found it chilling in the water where I left it and tried to push it back to shore, but then the saddest thing of the entire 100 days happened. A skeleton killed me. Oh, and yeah, the horse died too. When I got back home, I still had a few more minutes before the 100th night came to an end. So I decided to smelt up some iron dust from my crusher into ingots and craft myself some armor. Someone in a previous video recommended that I put down a marker of some sort for each 100 days that I complete. Of course, like a lot of things, I procrastinated even thinking about what I'd do until the very last minute. So uh, yeah, 100 days, nice. Thank you all so much for watching. This video was slightly longer than my previous two, so if you stuck around this long, either I sent you to sleep and I'm just talking to myself, or you enjoyed the video. If that's the case, this time put Steel or Rest in Peace Horsey in the comments. You choose. If you want to be notified when I post my next 100 days video, consider subscribing and hitting the bell. Till next time, my fellow Minecrafters.